Hello there. Here we have this wildebeest crossing that we've been waiting for all day long. Finally, it's happened here at the main south crossing. Thousands of them streaming across the water. We thought they'd left us for the season, but nay. There they are, attended by a number of hippopotamus who thought the holidays were here, and no doubt a number of reptiles. Now, this crossing is quite far from our camera, so that's why we are sort of at long distance here, and that's why the picture is perhaps not as clear as you might have remembered it being. It was all precipitated by one brave zebra and a couple of topi that pulled in and then jerked their way across the river, managed to escape the crocodiles, and that precipitated this huge massing of wildebeest coming across the river. The topi went around about there that you can see them uh, going in around there. Now, we are coming to you live, of course, from the Masai Mara. This is the Mara River scene of some of nature's most epic spectacles so please do talk to us you can send us your questions or comments as we watch this crossing unfold over the next little while there's something that either has eaten no not been taken by a crocodile just tripped over a rock that's nice much better to trip over a rock than be taken by a crocodile i always find not that the latter has ever happened to me and I will just quickly zoom out as we watch this happening to show you the crocodiles now moving up towards the crossing. Can you see them there? Just next to that yellow-billed stalk, you can see them heading up towards the crossing point. Let's go back in there and have a look what's happening. This is wonderful stuff. Birds flying all over. The sun's just come out. It's been a rather miserable day, to be honest. And now, as the sun's come out, so the animals have leapt into the water. Mazu, you're asking if the crocs are still hanging around. Well, I mean, they don't go anywhere else, really, Mazu. This is where they live. There's one, bottom right of your screen, swimming slowly towards the wildebeest. The reason he's swimming slowly, I think, is because it is a little bit cold. And that means that they obviously they are reptiles. Their appetites are suppressed. And, of course, they're going to swim more slowly than they would otherwise. Zebra and wildebeest, and for a while now, it would seem that the wildebeest had disappeared. And we were on the borders of Tanzania looking down into the Serengeti where we saw them all disappearing off into the wind. And then we had a huge amount of rain up here and the wildebeest seemed to be back. I saw hundreds of thousands the other side of the river yesterday and the day before that. And now here they are crossing back into the Mara Triangle. Monique, you're wondering, I've forgotten your question entirely now, I'm going to ask for it again. Ah, you want to see if some of them have turned back. Yes, I would say some do. They often get in halfway in and then they turn back and then they get back in again. Sometimes you find them swimming both ways across the river, which is a bit bizarre. Ooh, there comes a crocodile now, just lurking up towards the bottom of the screen now. There he is, cruising over the rapids. Come on. Come on, all you animals, get across there before the crocs move in. There's another one just in front of that stump to the right and middle of your screen. He's uh, making his way in. I think what you'll find is what we have here is known as a compressed shot. Those hippopotamus are a lot further away from the streaming animals than you think they are. Now they're moving out the way. I think they're feeling rather disturbed by the whole thing. I'm going to get into some deeper water. Yes, Elaine, you're absolutely correct. You say, is the river high at the moment after the storms? It is very high. Normally, this is not an area where the wildebeest can't stand, but you can see there that they are out of their depth completely. See there, they're swimming. They're not standing on the bottom there. That's a full swim they're doing there. They're doing the wildebeest paddle, or the zebra paddle. <laughs> not a very good joke there. Let's go back and see if those crocodiles are making any progress. Carol, you're wondering about these crocodiles and how long they can afford to go without a meal. Well, crocodile... Uh, not crocodile. <laughs> Carol, uh, normally they can go... Well, they can go up to a year. I've read two years without food. So probably a really big crocodile that's had a particularly good migration season. I suspect could probably go up to two years without food. Now, there are a few more on the side here, thinking better of it. No, here they go. They're just moving a little upstream, perhaps away from the crocs. 
Now they're having a bit of a panic attack, uh, moving up towards the bank of the river. Will they go? Won't they go? Who knows? Now the point at which they cross there is very commonly used. And Christine, you're wondering about the Paradise Pride, and for those of you who don't know who they are, they are lions that move up and down these crossing points. There are some tourist vehicles enjoying this crossing too. They move up and down these crossing points, just looking for exhausted crosses, and also for those who are too terrified to cross. And as they prevaricate, the Paradise Pride leaps often from these bushes over there. They like those bushes there to lie in ambush, and of course on the other side. Let's go back. I don't know that we're going to have too much more crossing action here. Let's have a look. And you can see the storms, the afternoon storms already starting there. That's over the escarpment, not far from where we are, where I'm sitting. One lazy crocodile's out enjoying the sun. Let's go back in here and see. Oh, there we go. They're back in the water. A bit further north of where they were before. Probably a better idea. Now, although these rocks look very dangerous, slippy and slidey, and they are, much easier to escape from a crocodile when you're on those rocks. But, of course, here comes the great risk. You can be swept away, which, of course, some of these are being swept away. But that's not a train smash. They just keep swimming. They'll make it across just fine. They'll get one or two footholds, leap over them, slip on them, get a few grazes on their knees, and then they'll make it over to the other side. It's amazing how few I've seen injured by these sorts of, um, well, slippy, slidey, rocky crossings. Carla, you're wondering if mothers get separated from their calves and vice versa. Yes, absolutely they do. But remember, these calves are all weaned by now, so they're not using the support of their mothers uh, for milk. And in fact, whether they have a relationship with their mothers at all at this stage, I'm, I'm not sure that they do. So they are grass eaters at this point. And so they, what they don't want to happen is to be separated from the herd. Mm, crocodiles very, very slow to get going. Kevin, you want to know the wildebeest doggy paddle across the deeper water? Uh, Kevin, normally uh, one or two of the more adventurous do the butterfly, uh, some or two, some of them do the breaststroke, and I have in fact seen one very nonchalant fellow doing the backstroke across the Mara River. Uh, Kevin is obviously, I'm obviously talking nonsense, but Kevin is asking about whether they do the dog paddle in deep water where they're out of their depth, and yes, they do. That's exactly what they do. So they swim the same as a dog and a horse and anything else with four legs that swims other than us. And turtles, I suppose. Here come a whole lot more. Now we do have a camera that is directly opposite this bunch, but unfortunately it has gone on the fritz today. It's decided that it's had a rather tough migration season and now wants no further part of it. Well, anyway, we'll go and try and sort that out a little bit later. But at least we have a wonderful view of these crossings. Let's just zoom out a little bit there, see what they're going to do. Zoom out a little bit there, see what they're going to do. Mayu, you're asking if the hippos ever charge at the Ganoos. I've seen it once or twice. We had a, a hippo sort of going for a young zebra foal who seemed utterly oblivious and didn't actually notice what was going on. And then the hippo gave up. But otherwise, no, it's very unusual. Let's just see what happens here. They often come down to the water at this point, but very seldom actually then go in. But maybe today will be different. Here we go, because clearly crossing is in vogue this afternoon on Friday the 13th. Ooh, can you imagine crossing a river on Friday the 13th infested with crocodiles? Mm. Now, Charlotte, as I was saying earlier, you say, was it earlier, is it safer for a wildebeest to cross on rocks than in deeper water? Yes, absolutely it is, because they can push off the ground. That's why it's safer. In deeper water, where they have to swim the dog paddle, that is where the crocodiles are at more of an advantage, because the wildebeest can't use their powerful legs to push off the ground and get out of their grips. All right, let me just zoom out here, quickly go back to... This is going to be a little bit fast. 
latest one to check here because this has been a place that animals have threatened to cross all day over there. Now we've had zebra going across both ways. So you've seen them going across the one way and we've had them going from left to right on your screen once or twice today. Normally sort of four or five at a time. So nothing like the massing that we've been watching earlier today or now. There we are. And that seems to be it. Fascinating stuff. And marvellous, I think, that none of them seem to die today. It's always nice when you see the predators triumph over the... At least the prey triumph over the predators, I find. Good. Well, let's see what happens during the afternoon. We will make sure to keep our cameras trained on any further action. So watch the notifications of whatever broadcast you happen to be watching. And we'll see you again live from the Masai Mara as the action unfolds.